Welcome back. In this segment, we will discuss design of limit gauges. And the key to the design of limit gauges is Taylor's theory of gauging. It defines the function that is the form of most limit gauges. And it has two parts, one related to the design of go gauges and the other to the design of no go gauges. So it states that go gauge checks the maximum material condition and it should check as many dimensions as possible. For example, size as well as shape. Whereas a no-go gauge checks the least material condition and it should check only one dimension. So go gauge is used to ensure that MMC is not violated and no-go gauge is used to ensure that LMC is not violated. And I hope you are clear uh, that for a hole, or any other internal feature, the MMC is the lower limit and LMC is the upper limit. For external feature like diameter of a shaft, the LMC is the lower limit and MMC is the upper limit. If you are not clear, I would recommend you to watch uh, my lecture on material conditions. For example, if we have to check a square hole, uh, that has a certain length and a certain width. So this feature or this part has th these two features that uh, have to be inspected. So we can have a go gauge of a shape like this. Now this checks the maximum material condition that is uh, the lower limit of the hole. So if either of the dimensions are too small, the gauge will not go. So if the lower limit either on the length or the width of the square hole is being violated, then this go gauge will not enter the hole and the part will fail inspection. So the, uh, the gauge will serve the purpose. Now, it is not like this in the case of a no-go gauge. So if you make the no-go no gauge of the same shape as the go gauge, then if either of the two dimensions, either the width or the length, uh, is greater than uh, the uh, uh, permissible limits, then this no-go will not pass and we will wrongly accept the part. This gauge will reject the part only when both length and width are made greater than the upper limits. So that is a, a, a risk that we will take. So if no-go gauge is made to both uh, dimensions of LMC, a condition may arise where, for example, the width of work is within specified limits while the length is oversized. Such a gauge will not enter the work and therefore the work will be accepted, although the length is outside the limits or in other words, uh, this dimension of the hole is larger than the upper limit. But because the width is within limits, so this no-go gauge will stuck, it will not pass and you will assume that the part is within limits or upper limit is not being violated. And it could be other way around as well that Length is within limits, uh, but the width is greater than the upper limit. In that case too, this no-go gauge will not enter and this is actually the purpose of the no-go gauge. So we will assume that the part is within limits, but it will not be. So it will only pass or it will only enter when both uh, the width and the length are greater than the upper limit. So the conclusion is that we need a separate no-go gauge for each individual, individual dimension. So for example, we may have this no-go gauge uh, to check the length and this one to check the conformance of the width uh, of the square hole. So for a hole to be checked, the go gauge is a cylinder with diameter equal to the minimum hole size. So that is the MMC of the hole. And of course, we are talking about uh, the plug gauge uh, in this case. Similarly, the no-go gauge is a cylinder 
with diameter equal to the maximum hole size and that is the LMC of the hole. And this is just the opposite for, for external dimensions. But there is a challenge. This is not as simple as it looks because the limits of size are required for the work which states that nothing can be made to an exact size, including also the gauges. So we have to apply a limits to the gauges. I mean, this is not as simple to make the go gauge to the MMC uh, of the hole and no go gauge uh, to the LMC of the hole and that's it. Because gauges are to be manufactured using some process and we have to apply limits to the gauges as well. So the question is, uh, there are two questions actually. What should be the uh, size of those limits? And secondly, in which direction should those limits be applied? So whether they should be uh, unilateral, whether the trolley should be unilateral or it should be bilateral. So these are the two questions that need to be answered. So uh, deciding the gauge tolerance relative to the nominal uh, gauge size is critical. For instance, if the gauge tolerance increases the size of go gauge and decreases the size of no go gauge, then the gauge will tend to reject good work, which is near the upper or lower size of limits. And if the otherwise happens, the gauge will tend to accept doubtful work, which is just outside the specified limits. So uh, I will explain the, these two points graphically in one of the following segments. But this is obvious that applying uh, limits to the gauges will either increase the size of the gauges or decrease the size of the gauges. So we may face one of these two risks, either to reject good work or to accept doubtful work. So the extreme sizes of all plain limit gauges shall not exceed the extreme limits of the par to be uh, gauged. All variation in the gauges, whatever their cause or purpose shall bring these gauges within these extreme limits. So this is the basic point, this is the conclusions that the gauge tolerances should be applied such that these tolerances are within workpiece tolerance zone. And this is only possible if we use unilateral tolerances. So that is the main idea that the direction of the tolerance should be such that the gauge tolerance should lie within the workpiece tolerance. And this is only possible using unilateral tolerances. The second question is, uh, whether these tolerances should be, for example, uh, increasing the size of a gauge or decreasing the size of the gauge, or, I mean, they should be uh, plus or minus. So the tolerances are applied to the go plug gauges and no go ring or snap gauges in the plus direction. And they are applied to no go plug gauges, uh, just the opposite of this. And go ring and snap gauges in the minus direction. And this is the only way that we will make sure that the gauge tolerances are within the workpiece tolerance. And I will explain it graphically. Generally, bilateral tolerances are applied to the master gauges that we will discuss later. But for the working gauges, we apply unilateral tolerances. So this is the idea. Now we are talking about a hole to be inspected in this case. So, MMC of the hole is its lower limit. So go gauge will be having the basic size equal to the lower limit of the hole. And LMC, so this was the lower limit was the MMC and LMC of the hole will be its uh, higher limit. So the basic size of the no go gauge will be as per LMC or the higher limit of the hole. Now we have to apply uh, tolerance uh, to, to these basic sizes of the gauge. So I repeat that uh, the basic size of the go gauge will be equal to the lower limit of the hole and basic size of the no go gauge will be equal to uh, upper limit of the hole. Now, in which direction should we apply the limit? So as we discussed on the previous slide that the limit should be applied such that uh, 
that the gauge tolerance zone is within the workpiece tolerance zone. So we will add something. We will add the tolerance to the size of the go because this one, this much is the workpiece tolerance zone. This is the workpiece tolerance zone. And we have to keep the gauge tolerances within this tolerance zone. And that is possible in the case of a hole if we add the limit to the uh, size of the go gauge. So the size of the go gauge will be equal to uh, the lower limit of the hole plus uh, this much uh, tolerance. And for the no go gauge, we will be subtracting uh, the limit so that the tolerance zone of the no go gauge is also within this workpiece tolerance zone. So in the case of plug gauge, we are adding the limit to the basic size of the go gauge and subtracting it from the basic size of not go gauge so that the gate uh, tolerance, so this is the tolerance zone for, for the go gauge. And this is the tolerance zone. This one is for the no go gauge. So it is very important to visualize it. Or we can say that this one, this horizontal line, this one is the basic size as well as uh, the lower limit of the go gauge and this upper is the, uh, uh, this one is the upper limit of the size of the uh, go gauge. And this one, this horizontal line is the basic size of the no go gauge as well as the upper limit. And this is the, this horizontal line is the uh, lower limit of the size of the no go gauge. Now the parts that are made in this region or in this region are the good parts, but they may be rejected. But all the parts that are made in this range, this one, they are all good parts and they will be accepted. And of course, the parts that are beyond these limits on this side or on this side are bad parts and they will be rejected. Now, in the case of bilateral tolerance, uh, the same risk is there, although that risk is slightly smaller that the parts made in this range or in this range are good parts uh, but they may be rejected, but the parts that are made in this range or in this range are bad parts, but they may be accepted because they will be within the size of the go or not go gauge. So we will come back to this point once again uh, in detail once we discuss uh, the calculation of the sizes of the gauges. So in unilateral system, the gauge tolerance zones lie entirely within the work tolerance zone. So the disadvantage of the system is that certain parts may be rejected as if they were outside the limits. But in bilateral system, the gate tolerance zones are bisected by high and low limits of work tolerance zone. So the disadvantage is that parts within the working limits can be rejected and parts outside the working limits can be accepted. So that is the bigger risk. So we will be using the unilateral system in our discussion. So how much should be the value of uh, the tolerance applied to the gauges? So we have discussed the direction, it should be unilateral. So as a rule of thumb, in the absence of specified gauge tolerance, the gauge maker will use 10% of the workpiece tolerance as the gauge tolerance for a working gauge. The amount of tolerance on inspection gauge is generally 5% of the workpiece tolerance and tolerance on master gauges those used for checking the accuracy of other gauges is generally 10% of gauge tolerance. So that is important to be kept in mind. So I would again ask you to think over this point that if a limit gauge is designed using bilateral tolerances, it may accept bad work and or reject good work. On the other hand, if the gauge is designed using unilateral tolerances, it may reject good work, but never accept bad work. 
So apart from the rule of 10%, we are having standards for the, for the application of uh, tolerances to different gauges. So uh, for example, this is one of those standards that has four classes of gauges, uh, double X, X, Y, and Z. And for a certain basic size, of the gauge, we are given recommended uh, values of tolerance. For example, our um, hole to be checked is having a diameter of one inch, so that will lie between 0.825 and 1.510. And if we are going to design a class X gauge, then the tolerance applicable will be equal to 0 0.00006 inches. Now, the double X uh, class is Precision lab that is used for master gauges, X is uh, used for plug and ring gauges, Y is uh, used for commercial gauges, plug and ring commercial gauges, and Z is relatively less accurate and that is also used for uh, working gauges. So you could see the values of uh, tolerance here that we are having. So actually larger values for, for the Z gauges and smaller as you move from Y to X and then finally to double X category. So the smaller the degree to which a gauge tolerance must be held, the more expensive the gauge becomes. So in the next segment, we will apply the Taylor theory of gauging to find the sizes of plug and snap gauges. Thank you very much.